All right. Great morning, everybody. So uh, it seems like this morning's topic is going to be love and relationships. I'm happy everybody's alive today. So uh, great morning to you all. I got stuff popping up here. I'll get used to this eventually. Okay. So great morning to you all. Um, like usual, I want to start with some questions that were asked. And, uh, and then I'm going to get on to the topic. This is not going to be what you guys are probably expecting if, um, you know, love and relationships, what somebody else might tell you. But you can guarantee you're going to get my truth of it this morning. And it's going to shift a lot of people's mindsets. And a lot of relationships are going to be on ice after this or on the rocks after this. I can guarantee it because you're going to come from a different perspective. But when you understand that everything is transactional in your life, you're going to kind of analyze what your give and take is. We all have different relationships in our life. They're not only love romantic relationships. There's different kinds of love. There's different kinds of relationships. And we're going to go through that this morning. Um... I was asked, one of the questions I was asked is, Toby, how do you maintain your vibe? When I wake up, it's about being grateful that I'm alive, number one. Number two, giving thanks verbally for the fact that I've been given another day. And embracing whatever learning there is for me today in my day okay I have to do things repetitively to keep myself going on this upward growth because just like anybody else I have a bag of beliefs in my subconscious that I have been re rewriting for a long time but there still remains a lot and just like anybody else i have these things that come up in my head that tell me a totally different story and i have to work to silence that so what do i do well it's easy there's little things that you can do in the morning to make sure to remind yourself to override just like you would teach your child something and you install it repetitively this is what you have to do for yourself Take a look at how old you are and how long you've been governing on a wrong... Well, no, let's not say wrong because you know what? It's all for learning, so it's been right until whatever moment you've been awakened to it. But I get up in the morning and I, just like anybody else, have situational things and circumstantial things and things that are fester in myself as well but what do I do well hey I grab a pen and paper and I start writing down things so that I can clearly analyze them because if they're just thoughts going out there well you know what I've got so many thoughts that rumble that uh, you know a couple of minutes down the line I don't remember what train of thought I was thinking about so I write everything down and I analyze it and that's the tool that I use now, you have to do assessing in your life. We all assess outwardly. Okay, well, uh, am I happy with this? Or am I happy with that? Or am I happy with this? But, hey, you got to assess inside sometimes. And you got to look at what's happening. Now, I do rituals that every day to maintain a high vibe. Because I really watch what I project into this world. It matters. Because it sends out a ripple effect that's huge because of the level of my energy that I'm operating on. And I understand that. And I respect that. So, that being said, a couple of morning rituals. First thing I do when I get up, I give thanks that I'm alive. It shifts the perspective. Now, anything that festers after that, it's easier to nip it in the butt coming from a grateful point because the law of gravity is going to pull me back. But just like a blade of grass can 
press through concrete no matter what the gravitational pull is? Well, am I weaker than that blade of grass? No, I'm not. So, when these things, when the gravitational pull of life wants to suck me back into this dense, dark operational system, I have to rise above it. It's not a choice. It is a reality for me that it's either I rise above it or I fester in it. Festering in it has gotten me nowhere good. Rising above it all has given me greatness. Greatness in my life, greatness in relationships, meaningful things, connectedness that I didn't have before. So those are all of the motivations to keep me on this high vibe. I really don't do it for myself. I am not that type of, oh, me, 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 me person. I never have been. I'm here to make a difference. I do make a difference. So understanding that and staying true to that, would I like to be a positive impact or a negative impact? And that's going to be my choice because my energy is going to be felt regardless. Because my presence is known in this world. It's felt. So, these are the things that I have to do with myself. I have to make conscious decisions, little simple choices when something arises. And yes, I'm human. I don't have it all figured out. And there is shit that blows my way, trust me, that I just want to choke it. Okay? Because that's my energy. And my false being was taught as a small child to pounce and pound at anything. That's how you react to life. And that's the wrong way to react. So I've had to not only accept that about myself and understand that that conditioning and that brainwashing was totally wrong and that I was set into a mode of survival. So when you're living in survival, it changes everything. And that's all you know. And when you grow in that state, that is your comfort zone. That's all you know. So you begin, you begin to love your survival mode, not knowing any better. And you believe that that's your way of life. But it's not. And it totally goes against what we are here for, what we are supposed to do. And now it's my choice whether I'm going to sit back in that and allow that operational system, which has been governing my subconscious and my whole being up until 15 months ago. So yeah, 45 years of living that versus 15 months of trying to figure it out. Well, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that that 45 years of my life of living survival is more dominant and more present and more of my being than the 15 months of change in enlightenment. But the change in enlightenment has given me so much expansion and growth within my own being, with an understanding that I am not that. And I am not what everybody installed into me. And I am not my parents' belief systems. I am not their hells. I am not their survivals. Whether that's the way I was programmed to operate or not. So there again becomes a simple choice. And yes, now understanding my soul contract, I get why I had to come through my mother to force change. I can own that. I have been a truth teller from I, when I was a little girl. The truth needs to be spoken. But from when I was a little girl, I was always told to be quiet. Because I always had too much to say. And I've always been loud because of my nature of my being. My energy is felt. 
So, anyway, let's get on to the love and relationships part of it. Because you know something? On that understanding this morning of my operational system of 45 years, yes, I attracted the worst type of people into my life. Because I was the worst type of person for myself. Why? Because that's the way I'd been programmed and conditioned to operate through my life. So if you want to understand your love in your life and you want to understand your relationships in your life, well, you better understand yourself and what you come from. Because that is you. And there's no shame in the game. Because guess what? You weren't in control of that. Where you were in control is that you accepted your life experience to come through into those conditions and to carry every scar that you carry today and to have lived everything that you, that you lived. And see, this is why we get stuck in repetitive patterns because we've already agreed to live whatever it is we've had, we have to live. Now, whether we have to relive things to get it right, is up to you. I had to relive shit in my life over and over and over again. And the it got louder. And it got louder. And it got louder. And I had to fight for my life. That's how loud it got. And have been since. But listen, that doesn't give me a victim role. When it comes to love and relationships in your life, there's all kinds of different relationships that people need. Let me put it this way. We all have love languages. We all crave things in our life that are our human nature. Let me break it down to its simplest form. When there is a baby born What happens to that baby if it's not touched? Some food for thought this morning. What happens to that baby if it's not nurtured and fed and loved? Its soul will not thrive. Its soul will check out. Because we have that choice within our soul. You see, what happens when we come to this earth, hey, we don't have certain understandings. We know what we have to do, but we don't know what it feels like to be in a physical body. So once we're in that body, we do have basic needs as a human. We need to be loved. We need to be touched. We need to be, because this is all, we come from unconditional love. And when we're born, we're born in that state. We're not born saying, oh, shit, our parents are fuck-ups. No, because our parents are never fuck-ups, no matter what it is they're bringing to us. Even no matter all of what was inflicted on us. Hey, you chose to jump into these conditions to bring change. So, when you get real with what that is, and you analyze that maybe you've been playing the victim and being stuck in that mindset, you're going to want to change it for yourself. Because all of this stuff affects your love for yourself, number one, and affects every interaction that you have on this planet with other people. Okay? What are, rea what are relationships? Relationships are a connection between any two people. And there's many different types of relationships. You got platonic relationships, which there's no sex involved. You got casual relationships where there's lots of sex involved, maybe, but uh, just no attachments. And then you got your codependent relationships where you got your bringing to the table everything and the other one's just sitting there eating, not contributing anything. And then you have your open relationships. And then there's, well, we all know what open relationships are. They're open. There's no commitment. Well, there may be a commitment, but not to each other. It's a commitment just to uh, use each other while you sleep with everybody else, basically, in my eyes. But that's just my opinion again, too. Everybody's got needs, and they, they search for them, and they fulfill them in different ways. So, 
Well, again, that's their choice. You got casual relationships that involve sex without commitment, but you commit, though, I don't know, I guess, whatever. Anyway, let's get back to, <laughs> sometimes you don't want to be in my head, okay? So, and then we got toxic relationships. And these are the relationships that harm you on every level, emotionally, physically, spiritually. But that codependent relationship, too, does the same kind of thing in my eye. If somebody's, you know, if you're give, give, giving, and the other person's just take, 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 take in, well, but why do you allow that? It has to do with your belief systems. It has to do with what you accept. So, if as a child, you're never taught what a healthy relationship is, number one, to have with yourself first, how do you know how to love yourself? How do you know how to love others? You watch and you model those around you for what you see them doing. Now, that's going to tell you a lot. Us as adults, we sit back and we say, oh my goodness, why do I attract the wrong people in my life? And why does this happen? And why does that happen? First of all, let's get it right. It's all for learning, to learn about yourself. Okay. And I've had to do a lot of learning about myself to even get to a point where I can have a healthy interaction with anybody, including myself. Because the things that I was made to believe as a small child about love, hey, when you're living in survival, there's no room for love. It's as simple as that. When you're coming from survival, your basis is of fear. There's always a threat. So do you think that's time to learn how to love anything? No, it's a time of survival. So if you're living in that state and that's where you come from, such as myself, you have to unlearn all of that unhealthy shit that you're storing as your belief systems. Because, yeah, <laughs> I come from two very intense parents who did not have an easy life. And together they didn't have an easy life. It doesn't mean that they didn't love each other. They probably loved each other the best that they knew how at that given time with the circumstance and situation and the pressures that were on them. And when I think about how different things would have been for my parents, had they not had to live each rightfully their own bags of shit in their life, I believe that maybe coming together, things would have been different for them. But I can't dwell on that. I have to see things for what they are, accept who I am and where I come from. And accept the fact that maybe, yeah, okay, I wasn't born into some loving haven, but that's fine and my interactions all my life with people were not that healthy why because hey I was stripped of my innocence at a very young age I was born into a state of survival so what does that mean well when my energy went into my mother as okay I'm accepting this life experience and I was conceived, my moment of conception, my being grew in my mother's womb while she survived hell. So what does that mean? That means that while I, my being was forming, it was forming, absorbing all of the states and frequencies of everybody around me that were in a state of hell. My existence has been produced from, on a material level, my earthly self, my genetics were constructed in a state of not love and security and safety and uh, let's just say that. 
So how would that not affect every one of my interactions in my life? Obviously it does. Now I have two choices with that. I can sit back and I can just have all kinds of shit interactions in my life. Or I can change it. And that's on me. Whatever happened to me and whatever path I took to get here, yes, I knew and I understood the conditions. And that's how I've made it this far. Because your body is going to do whatever it has to do to make you survive. Your soul, actually. No, not even your body. Your soul is going to... So, yeah. My life since conception has been an accumulation of hell. But coming to a state of enlightenment and knowing who I am and what my purpose is here on this planet changes all of that. I carry those badges proudly. I look at them as my stripes. Because no matter what I've endured in my life and no matter what I initially started out from, and no matter what the trajectory, like, the trajectory of my life was heading, I rose above it. And that's on me. Simple choices. So yeah, you got to get real. People say, okay, yeah, we're attracting all the wrong things into our life when it comes to love and relationships. Take a look at the relationships that you have with yourself first. Why you have these relationship with, relationships with yourself first. Do you know how to self-love? Do you, do you understand that you're worth? Or were you told all your life that you weren't going to amount to anything? And, uh, you know, you got to work hard in life to be happy. And you got to do this. And you were fed all the bullshit lies of how you were supposed to be. Because I highly doubt that you came from parents that were on an enlightened path. So we all have shit to work out. So the things that we attract into our life, you got to take a good look at where it's coming from. And all my life, I, hey, bad relationships. I didn't get what I wanted out of things. Why? Because I knew suffering all my life. I'd come to a point that people don't have to suffer. Being on a spiritual path and being more enlightened, 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 I chose to be a positive force, no matter what I was constructed of, because love overrides everything. The love of my heart is greater than any infliction, circumstance, or situation that I've had to endure. And that's facts. So, I got a choice. Just like everybody else does when it comes to relationship, relationships, everything is transactional. So, when I realized that it was what I come from and who I have been all my life, that was the dis most destructive aspect of any love in my life or any relationship in my life before 15 months ago in real connection to source i'm sorry i didn't know what unconditional love was we all think oh love hurts you know love is painful love is this love is that no it's none of that love is like they say that passage okay yeah love is kind <laughs> love is patient love is caring love it yeah but love unconditional love is a lot more than that so until you can really unconditionally love yourself and accept yourself you can't unconditionally love anybody you know what I thought I loved my kids. Yeah, I gave birth to my children and I thought I loved my kids on the deepest level ever imaginable until my recent enlightenment. And turning it around and being able to find a new love for myself and for my life and for my purpose on this earth 
has amplified and ignited an unconditional love beyond measure that I now have for my children. I couldn't love them like this before while I was coming from a place of survival. I couldn't love anybody coming from what I was made of. So I was given two choices to myself. Toby, how are you going to operate? Are you going to operate how you've been constructed to operate? Because you have thousands of reasons why you can stay in that state and hate everybody and hate everything. Or are you going to be true to your own mission? This is why I think it's important to talk and to talk to everybody. Because guess what? Unless I went through it, I would not understand it to the depths that I do now. Why do I believe in change? Because I am change. And I am a game changer. And if you want love and great relationships in your life, no matter from what level and what type of love it is, you got to start loving yourself enough to unshackle yourself from what you have been constructed to be. And it's as simple as that. The, for, the perfection of our beings is within our souls. And it's within our hearts. And that's what fuels our existence here. And it's the energetic self that is first and foremost before any body is formed. And I'm proof of that. Because my truest nature of my being is an unconditional love that is tapped into the know, all knowing, and it's an infinite love. There's no boundaries to that. And it gives me life, and it gives you life. So that's what we're made of. How could it not be true? My life of 45 years proves to me that that's not who I am. And I know that. Why do I know that? Because it is my heart that reminds me of that. So, we can sit there and say, well, I am this in this way because... Because, oh boy, I could write a book on that. Right? Now, being who I used to be, remaining in my false self, in my thinking brain, where the only thing that's stored in my subconscious is fear, trauma, shame, denial, guilt. Nothing good. You know, how could I have meaningful, fulfilling relationships in my life until now operating from that state nobody can so those are the things that you have to think about and this is why i stress you are not what you have been made to believe you are and i hope you understand it on a different level this morning because i am not my genetics I am not my life circumstance I am not the survival mode that I operated on for 45 years that is a long time and a lot of people know me and I'm not sitting here saying that I haven't had any great relationships or great friends because I have and this is truly what has made me get through it all. And when it comes to love and relationships, this is why I want to stress to you all this morning too, that family is not always biological. I have family out there in this world that have no blood lineage to me. But they are the ones 
that at a drop of a dime, they have my back. And there's an army of people that have my back, genuinely. Why? Because I have been good to them, no matter what my life situation has been. And that's my choice, too. And it's crazy to say. But when it comes to love and relationships, when I look back, no matter how shitty my life is, I've been through a lot of different men. Why? Because I wasn't bringing the best me to anything. So how could I create something meaningful in a relationship if I myself just didn't know how to? And that's what it comes down to. I didn't know how to. But does, is that going to stop me from learning how to now? Because I'm not that person. So take a look at yourself when you're looking out at your relationships. Because look again, you're looking outside. And you're accusing people of making you feel certain ways. In actuality, there's nothing that can make you feel anything. How would I put it this way? If thoughts produce feelings, then there's not one person on this planet making you feel any way. Let me break it down. No matter what happens, no matter what situation lies, whether it's in a platonic relationship, a work relationship, uh, any type of relationship, people are people. People are a reflection of their life, of their insecurities, of their doubts, of their... Because that's what people have been taught to display. There are very few people in this world that know how to be self-loving, that understand their self-worth, that validate themselves or validate anything good in anybody else. And that's the realness of it. Why? Because the majority of us have been living in this dark, dense situation coming from situations and circumstances that weren't healthy for anybody number one but that doesn't mean that you can't override that I'm proof of it so if I can do it so can you it doesn't matter what you think about yourself I I don't think that anybody realizes right now the depth of what i'm saying but you will and i want you to share this for people because there's people that need to hear this stuff okay like if it didn't do you any good that's fine but i'm sure it did whether you want to admit it or not food for thought this morning why because you matter and these are things that i've had to do for myself so why not make you guys aware of it? You know, anybody who really genuinely knows me and has known me all my life or all my team, yeah, I've been a wild, extreme person all my life, but understand this, what I'm coming from is a place of survival. I was bred in survival. I grew up in survival. So, what did I create for myself? Survival. So, how could I not create survival if that's all that I knew? And if I modeled all the shitty relationships that were surrounded by me, right? So, look, coming up as a kid, you're watching all of this stuff, and this is how you think people act. And this is how you think people treat each other. And this is how you base your fundamental thoughts on and your belief systems on. Now that's where it all stems from because this stuff is stored there. So I don't care who you think you're governing from today. Until you get real with what your subconscious is really governing on and what you're really programming, well, program from, well, then it's then that you can realize what type of relationships you're creating in your life. 
get real with why you're having these relationships in your life, which has to do with internal stuff. And you're going to get real with what you're pulling into your life, accepting in your life, allowing in your life. On any level. There is no relationship that anybody should be stuck in on any level that doesn't make them feel good. Okay? No two people are always going to be in a good mood. No two people are going to ever see eye to eye. But there's some little simple things that you can do. But I'm going to be real with it. When you're doing the nitty gritty inner work, it's hard to be with anybody. Because you're evolving, you're changing. The things that you once wanted in your life, you no longer want. And it's happened to me many times. And that's why for a long time I just stayed away from relationships. Because... It couldn't serve its purpose while I was transforming because I'm only going to attract what I feel inside. So if I'm living in survival, I'm going to attract somebody who also is living in survival. And the things that I believe about myself, well, I'm going to attract somebody who's going to believe those things about me too because that's what I'm projecting. Another thing also too is simply... Is this an awakened being or not? Like, what state are you coming from? What are you bringing to that relationship? You gotta, quit. you know, when you when you look at bad relationships, there was one thing that I, I was watching, and I'm a big fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. This guy helped me to, to visualize healing for myself. But anyway. There was a piece of information that really triggered something inside of me one time when I was listening to my videos and stuff. And that was, you know, if you wonder why your relationships aren't working, there's one question you have to ask yourself. Would you date you? Simple. That blew my mind because I sat back and I said, holy sh Jesus. Like, really? <laughs> Damn. No. <laughs> no I wouldn't and I listed about a thousand reasons to myself why at that particular time in my life there's no way and that made me do a lot of self reflecting what am I bringing to it well <laughs> I, you can't be a person coming from survival and you can't be a person that Hey, you're going to get out of a relationship as much as, number one, you're bringing to it. What kind of love are you bringing to it? Are you, you What are your intentions? Who? What type of person are you? These are the questions you have to ask yourself before you analyze your transactional interactions and relationships with people. Stop. Look at yourself. I had to, and trust me, I didn't like what I saw. 45 years of survival coming from it. Hey, listen, that produced a lot of crap. But that's not who I am. So now at this point in my life, understanding that and taking simple choices and doing simple rituals, like one being... I have to remind myself every morning of the things that I'm grateful for. Because when I wake up and I realize or I wake up and I'm in a setting or a situation that I don't, I'm not too fond about because I'm now no longer that person who accepted that for myself, it's disrupting in my soul. Let me break it down like this. I've been in the same place for uh, over nine years right now. This is the first time in my life I've had so much stability. But it's given me the chance to survive again. Right? To evolve into something better. But it's difficult for me to remain loving to myself and to with, even in the relationship with myself when I wake up in the same environment of being that old self. 
So waking up in the same environment and with the same gravitational pull in the same cesspool of negativity that I'm surrounded by, it's difficult to keep my head right. It really is. And it's difficult to have meaningful conversations with people because I'm no longer that person where, you know, people come with their masks and, they, you know, how they want you to see them. And I see right through it. So I don't have a lot of trust for people because a lot of people don't trust themselves. And I see that. So if you can't trust yourself, I have a hard time trusting you. Because I can't put my trust in somebody who doesn't hold trust for themselves. Now, if you're living from a place of trusting yourself, there's no fear in that. So there's no survival. So when I watch people in survival mode, and I know what I've lived in my own survival mode, I have a very hard time trusting because I know that that's not a place of love. I know that's not a place of unconditional love. That's a place of doubt, shame, fear. Everything's fear. I don't come from that place anymore. Now, I had to take 45 years of life to get to the understanding of that. But, hey, I really had to check myself to understand love and relationships in my life and why I had the love and relationships that I did in my life and what but I don't regret any of it don't get me wrong because everything has produced who I am today so if you take out any one of my situations in my life I would no longer be who I am today now understand this I do not consider myself any better than anybody but I matter just as much and I do have a purpose on this planet. And I do have a mission. But it ultimately is my choice whether I'm going to rise above what life has inflicted on me and bring love and change into this world. Or it is my choice also if I choose to sit back and blame and shame and be in denial and blame everything in my life. And find all of the excuses why I shouldn't have anything meaningful and make excuses oh well he did this or she did this and no that's a cop out I don't cop out I deal with things head on in my life and if you don't like something you can change it and it doesn't matter what life has constructed your experience to be it's time that you sit back and assess who you are completely and what you come from completely and take a look at the things that are serving you purpose in your life and understand the state of being that you're in so yeah, I'm going to say it loud and proud. You can walk around on this face of this earth in denial and in shame and in fear of judgment and acceptance of others. Or you can stand up and rise above everything that life has made you to be. And when you know that's possible, why wouldn't you take the leap? So what if you don't know who you're going to become? You're given a chance to create who you would like to be in this world. Would I like to be that person who lived hell all my life? And I can sit here and I can tell you stories for days and give you all the reasoning behind why I could sit as that person. Or I could sit here and I can try to show you that you got to get real with yourself. 
And that's what it comes down to. I talk about the best version of myself and, you know, I'm still not the best version of myself. How could I be? I lived 45 years in a state of survival, constructed out of survival in the most love-lacking situations that anybody can endure in a lifetime. But I still choose to be my truest nature, and that's love, unconditional love. I don't love people because they're good to me or they do things for me. No, because my reality is, is I'm a giver. And being that, hey, if you don't get too much in life being a giver, because what do you attract? Takers. But us givers also, too, have a hard time receiving. Because we've been giving all of our life. Why? Because we've been constructed to be people pleasers. Living in survival, yeah, you want to please everybody because you think that that's just the way you have to operate. Hang that mask up. Check yourself at the door. Figure out who you really are. Stop making excuses for your low vibration. Stop making ex excuses for the states that you allow yourselves to be in. Fix it. Because you can. I'm proof of it. And if I can do it, you can do it. And so my big thing this morning with love and relationships is simply this. Check the relationship that you have with yourself. Check the relationship that you have with life. Do you love yourself unconditionally? Or do you nitpick and break yourself apart? Oh, well, I love this about myself, but I hate this about myself, then. Oh, well, I love this about life, but I hate this about life. That's conditional love, people. That's not love. You don't tear things down to build them. Normally, you plant seeds and you have faith they're going to grow. Right? Just get it right. And you will as long as you're learning. Because I want to stress to you that my journey is different than yours. And it's unique. But you got to get real. Real with who you are. What you've been created from. And why you operate the way you do. And until you can do that, you are going to attract into your life Everything that you are and everything that you project. Because everything that you give to this world is, that will be your take and of the world also. It's all a choice, people. Anyway, understand this when it comes to certain awareness and understandings. When you get real with who you are, and you no longer want to shackle what your creation has been. You're not going to pull the wrong relationships into your life. Because you're going to start having a relationship so deep with yourself. That that's what matters. And you have to start building a relationship with yourself at some point. It's not all external. The external relationships are just showing you what's going on internally. That's all it is. So, anyway, love you all. It's been 49 minutes. Have a great day. You're amazing. You're alive. Hey, guys, check out my books. My books are just as real as these lives. Okay? You got my first one, Turning Hell into Heaven. Second one, Your Best You. Third one, Wise Up to Rise Up. Fourth one, You Got It Bad to You, Walk in My Shoes. You got two kids' books, Loving Reminders of I Am, and the combined edition, the first three. And I just did a, a parenting book, Wised and Rising. And there's a lot of these things that I talk about in my books. Actually, that's what my books are constructed of. 
is getting real with it all. My books are the farthest thing from, oh, poor me, poor me. No way, because there is no poor me. How could there be? I have just unshackled myself from life's inflictions. Poor me what? <laughs> I'm starting to love myself. I'm starting to learn my greatness. I'm starting to love life. But you got to come out of survival first. And until you've gotten real with your life, I hate to tell you, you're in survival. So okay, let's get real with it together. Let's help each other. This is all relation, you know, this is a relationship too. I take my relationship with you all very seriously because I want you guys to understand and overcome the things that are blocking you from your own greatness and from you genuinely, unconditionally loving yourself and your life. Why? Because you matter. So, I love you all. Have a great day. I hope you guys took a lot out of this morning's live. And... Um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a day that is filled with everything your heart desires. Have a great day, folks. I love you all.